Oh, yeah. 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 He's the one that knows the way to help me. Yeah. God, he's the one that came down from oh, heaven. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to say the one to everyone. Yeah. Happy yeah. Mother's Day to all of the Mother's Day. 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 We had gotten some Mother Day gifts for all the mothers, but then I got it through Sister Thomas very nice. That's me, guys. It's okay. Hey. I'm good. Hey. It's okay. Hey. And she said that uh, she will be giving my prayer request on everyone on tomorrow and on the end. So, ladies, she do have one. That she had put together, I think that she did that to keep herself out of trouble. Yes, so, yes, I always bring customers. She said, I, 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 I do have one, I, I did get to keep it for the but now the other one's going to be in tomorrow. And so, uh, after we have service, we do have something for each and every one of the other ladies for you all today. Yes. But, your gift will be coming from past yes. to the latest year or okay. right. on tomorrow. tomorrow. I okay. want you to know that I thought about all of the mothers, young mothers to be. He did. And wait till his mother to be. Make he sure did. that we got husband to be. Amen. Mary when we get children to be. Yes. Yes. And that way you won't have to raise them by yourself. Yes. So live. You know, so that's learning those things. So I also want to say that our men meeting that we didn't have on yesterday, we will be having on next Saturday, the second Saturday. Yes. And we are looking forward to our men meeting on next Saturday. Yes. Yes. Young man, it will be his first time out. So I'm looking forward to it. And I'm going to volunteer to say, I want to do it. And I can't wait for him to get out of his mouth. I want to second that motion. I want you to do it. Amen. 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 That's where we grow. We, we can never do anything the second time before we do it the first time. Yes. There has to be a first yes. in every thing. Yes. I want to thank you all once again for yesterday. We had an outstanding time. One little, one little second. I really felt good when I saw that young people having fun and enjoying themselves. The game truck that they had there, the big ride. And, <laughs> and, 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 and I said, that was good. I, I don't know who cooked that food. But real. I believe uh, one of the members said, I don't know who grandma cooked all this food. Because it had to be grandma. Because it was so good. And I didn't have anything that wasn't good. So we thank God for yeah. how he blessed us on yesterday. <clears throat> and while we are preparing for the word of God, we're going to have prayer for you. And I'm going to ask you to turn the Bible to the book of Joshua. That's again. So turn to the book of Joshua, the ninth chapter. While you're getting there, let us well, Heavenly Father, in the name of you, we come today with thanksgiving in our heart. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see another mother. We thank you for each and every mother that has come out. And Lord, we especially thank you for those that have brought their children out. That their children may grow in you. Because every generation, it has to be passed down. Because one generation passes away, and the next generation comes forward. So help us, Lord, to train up our children in the way that they should. And when they get angry, they want to depart from it. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you, Lord, be down in the, into the storehouse. That you will anoint my mind to think the thoughts you have in me. That you will anoint my long lips to speak the word that you would have me to speak. Anoint this tent, this body, to be taken control of by your Holy Spirit and you as a tool, as a vessel, Father. Anoint the ears of your people to receive your word, Father. By the ground of our hearts, that your word may be planted in our hearts, and that we may bring forth the fruit that is truly pleasing in your sight, that we may live a life that is pleasing to you, a life that shines in a place that is dark, and others may see you in our life and give honor and glory unto you. Lord, we ask you to bless you upon this country, 
and upon his word. Back to the name of Jesus, that that be a great revival, Father. Let that great revival start here at True Look. Lord, we ask that you will send those that have backslid, those that have walked away. Lord, all those that belong to you, that you will send them back home. And they may start to mature and grow in your word and as you prepare for our eternal life. Back to the name of Jesus, that you bless this country, Father, and the leader of this country. We ask in the name of Jesus, that Lord, that you bless this word. Bless the leader of this word. And Father, let there be a revival in this world and let it start with them, this country. Father, this country was established upon your word. And Lord, we drifted away from it. And Lord, we know that you have the power to bring us back into you, Father. And Lord, we ask that you will keep our faith, build our faith in you. And Lord, that our walk is a spiritual walk. Lord, with it, that our battle is in a war battle in the spirit. That our weapon, Lord, is not current, but Lord, let them be spirit. And Father, if you grant us these things, we will give you honor and we will give you glory. We ask that you bless and save our children and grandchildren, Father, and their children and grandchildren. And Lord, let us be a family that has been set aside as the Levites. Lord, that a known for nothing to being committed, being the praise of you and the work in your house, in the vineyard. To do your will. The Lord, if you grant us these things, we will give you all in glory. But now, Lord, we turn this word over to you. We turn this worship over to you. That you will come in now and have your way. We ask these things in your Son, Jesus Christ, in the name of prayer. The Lord, we also ask that you go with all the bereaved family that they go on through their time of bereavement. We ask that you strengthen them where they are weak. Build them up where they are torn down. And give them understanding in the places that they don't understand. Go with those behind the dear high wall and the road go. Lord, we ask that you just touch them in some way with your spirit, with your hunger and faith, for your word, if you will, and your will. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Before we get started, we have our plea. This is my power. My best instruction for the living earth. It is the word of God. I was studying to show myself approved unto God. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Because God said it, I believe it, and that's so. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the ninth chapter of Joshua, beginning at verse 11 through verse 27. I read verse 11. We read 12, and when we get to verse 27, we'll read it together. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Verse 11, it says, Therefore, our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spoke to us, saying, Take the men with you for the journey and go to meet them and say to them, We are. Your servant. Now therefore, make a covenant with us. Out of our houses of the day, for we came forth from two schools. But now behold, it is dry and it is moldy. And these wine skins, which we feel were new. And see, they are torn. And these are the and our sandals have become old because of the very long journey. And the men took of their visual and asked not to sin of the mouth of the Lord. So Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them to let them leave. And the rulers of the congregation sworn to them. Then the children of Israel journeyed and came to their city on the third day. Now their city was Gilead. Sire, 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 Vera and 
Jahim. Israelite soldiers lied and lost. Joshua went in and 
prayer. Find out what went wrong. How can we be defeated? We're the children of God. He has given us this land. He has promised it to us. What out? Well, we know from a little while back how we preached from that subject. Sin in the camp. So now sin had come into the camp. Achan had them stole some things and hid it that belonged to God. Well, they had to go through finding out who it was. And after God had them pointed out exactly who it was, he would destroy it and his whole family would destroy it. That shows us that the thing that we do in our family, it can affect everybody in the family. Yeah. Because the whole family knew what they had to be. They knew he had to be this stuff in that tent. They knew he had to cover it up. But yet still nobody opened their mouth. God had to call him out. Well, after finding out, they went back and now they got everything straight. There was a defeat in that seventh chapter. They defeated, I mean the eighth chapter, they defeated AI. Well, that brings us Coming into the chapter that we're in today, after the fall of Ai in the eighth chapter, the ninth chapter, we find that people they heard about what God had done. I need to take my time with this because we need to understand something sometimes. Just because a person is with you, you think that don't mean that they're really with you. They're too nice. You see, sometimes people get close to you because of who you are, because of the position, because of what they can get from you. That can be numerous of reasons why a, people, a person wants to get close to you. This is why in all things, we need to seek the Lord. No matter what it is, we need to seek the Lord. Even in friendship, we need to seek the Lord. Even in friendship of a male and female, we need to seek the Lord. Because we need to know if what is this person, if this person will be right for me. So now as we come into this, this ninth chapter, that was treated with the Gileadites. But now the Gileadites come in and they heard about how God had blessed them and they knew that they were going to miss them. So they come up with a plan of this stuff. I know that this is Mother's Day. And usually, the Lord will give me a message for Mother, the ladies. And I believe that this is going to fit ladies and men also because deception do not discriminate. Deception is lies. Deception and lies are two of the greatest threats to a human relationship and society itself. Anything is built upon deception and lies, mm -hmm. and we are from. What's that, man? If a person borrowed money and promised to pay it back, but it's lying, the creditor is never repaid. What if a person comes to you a friend and asks to borrow some money to pay you back at the same time? You loan this money, but then you go and extend yourself into something else because you are depending on what they told you. And you have told somebody else that this other person is dependent on what you told them. But the person that you are depending on will learn. Yes. It puts you in a bind. If a man or a woman promise to love one another, but it's lying, there's going to be a broken engagement or a broken marriage. What's that now? If a leader lies and deceives, he misleads the public. That's a loss of integrity and a damaged segment of society. When we look at the politicians that we have today, we look at deception and lies. When we look at our country today, it was built on deception and lies. So now anything that's built on deception and lies, it cannot last. It is of the greatest concern to God that we're going to be deceptive and don't be 
values. You see, when we are deceptive, we are following the way of Satan. He is, he came to kill, steal, and destroy. He is the liar, and he is the father of lies. He the one that told the first lie. So now here it is, we notice in this first and second verse, there was a great alliance of enemies that was formed against God's people. While the Israelites were dedicated and committed their lives to God, renewing their covenant with God, their duties to obey God, enemies was formed against them. You see, when God started to bless you, the people around you, they want to hear you, but they can't. So what do they do? They start to bring in Satan. Start to call in awesome of evil spirits, demons, devils, and they all are called together to make war against the believer. You'll find there, you see that there. Hittite, the king, who were on the other side of joy, all of the king on the other side of the joy. In the hill, the lowland, in the coast, the, 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 of the great sea, toward Lebanon, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hittite, the Jebusite, and all had heard about what God was doing. So guess what? While the people of God are celebrating and getting themselves ready, the enemy is being formed. So now we wonder sometimes, why is it that I'm trying, and you know how we say it, I'm trying my best to do what's right. And every which way I look, Lord, I'm being attacked. And then we will say, Lord, why is this happening to me? God said it's happening to you because I want to take you and make an example to the whole world that come against you. What is he saying here? That if I'm on your side, I'm greater than any enemy that can come against you. While we're getting ready to dedicate ourselves, the enemy is coming against us. But one of the enemies in that, in that land they didn't leave a fall from where the Israelites was camped out there, about 25 miles to get it. So they come over the plain. See, the plan was to infiltrate and make a treaty with the people of God. Now, y'all need to get this because God had them told them in the beginning not to make any treaty with anybody in the land that he had promised them because there was no reason to compromise because the land was their inheritance. In other words, you ain't got to write no tree with nobody because I have given it to you and whatever enemy come against you, as long as you're obedient to me, I'm going to fight your battle. So now the enemy, they start to disguise themselves. So what they did was they put on old clothes. They, they, they put on, they took an old bag and put on old shoes. They tore the clothes. Why were they doing that? To make themselves look like that they wasn't from that country, but they respected them enough that they wanted to make peace with them. So when the children of Israel, Joshua, not consulted God, we got to see God in everything. He didn't consult God, and by not consulting God, he made a decision. The decision that he made led him into a treaty with somebody who had deceived him. Now you know the question I asked. Now, if they told a lie and tricked Joshua, why should Joshua keep his word? We asked ourselves the first thing we would have said, oh no, you don't lie to me. I'm not going to do that. Whatever I told you I want to do, I'm not going to do it. 
because you lied to me, you tricked me, you deceived me. And that wasn't fair. So guess what? I'm not going to keep my word either. Mm -hmm. Joshua could have said that. But you know what? Joshua didn't say that. Do you know why? Because Joshua had given his word in the name of God. As being people of God, our word should be good. The reason I would go in the home to keep my word is because my word is symbolic to me. Y'all yes. need to get this. And I am standing as a representative of God. So if I'm a representative of God and my word is no good, I am casting a bad shadow of who God is and the people of God. Yeah. Yeah. A lying preacher. A deceptive preacher. Mm -hmm. And you would look at that and say, nah, that preacher should be ashamed. Is that what about a believer? We're putting the preacher out in that. Hey, we're not going to go. But don't you understand? You are representative of God. Mm -hmm. And your word should be you. Mm -hmm. If you tell a person you're going to do something, you should do exactly what you say. Right. So, by God, that made it perfectly clear. Don't you be right with treating with nobody. The inheritance is yours. You don't have to go through all that. And any time that we don't have direction from God, Joshua, not any of his officials, knew that the people were lying. Y'all didn't get that, did you? Let me tell you something about a lie. A lie don't care who tells you. Mm, no. A lie don't discriminate. Mm. And don't think because somebody is telling you something that it is really the truth. Mm -hmm. Then how am I going to know the truth? I'm glad you asked. By seeking the Lord in all things. You see, we'll seek the Lord in some things. We'll seek the Lord in most things. But we forget to seek the Lord in all things. Because sometimes we think that we can see our way. And Joshua thought that he could see his way. The leaders of the people thought they could see their way. So because they thought they could see their way, they thought the people were telling the truth to them. They made a truth. Mm -hmm. And they went against God's people. Anytime we don't have God's direction, we don't know. This is why I tell you all the time, pray about it. I don't care what you pray about. It. Yeah. You better go to town, pray about it. You say, I got to pray to go to town. Do you want God to protect you? Yeah. Do you want to go and come back home? Yeah. Then you need to pray about it. And say to him, I pray. Yeah. God promise is constantly needed to guide against deception and dishonesty. Today, Mother's Day, Lady's Day, I'm a man. Mm. Lady, a man will deceive you. Yeah. Yeah, too, man. I'm not talking about some other man, I'm talking about men, period. Mm -hmm. A man, and he will lie to you, he will deceive you. <clears throat> He will make you promise it, that he will give you the moon, and the, the sun, and the star. Guess what? Don't hear it wrong to Did you not? But it sounds good when he's talking to you, and it even sounds better when you start listening to it. Through me. He put that a smile. But he told the other little girl and the other young lady the same thing. Yes. So how are we going to know if the young man is telling you the truth? Seek the Lord mm -hmm. in all things. Mm -hmm. Don't make your mind up yourself. Mm -hmm. You see, the emphasis upon keeping and honoring our word, we must protect and honor God. You see, verse 18, I believe that it says, but the children of Israel 
Israel did not attack them because the rulers of the congregation had sworn to them by the Lord God of Israel and all the congregation complained against the ruler. The congregation said, we should keep the rule. The Lord said, brother, destroy him. We should destroy him. The Lord did say, we destroy him. But guess what? I'm getting my word. I have to go back to the light. I have to keep the word. God will honor because I'm keeping my word. Mm -hmm. Guess what? And he's going to make all things work out. But it's good. Why? Because I am doing what pleased him. What is it that pleased him? I'm honoring him. I'm honoring him by honoring my word. He was the one when they kissed what he had told me, but I didn't know because I didn't seek him. So now I keep my word and do what seeks him. Yeah. What do I have to seek it for? Forgive me? Yes, sir. I got to repent. He said that then all the new said to all the congregation. We have sworn to them by the Lord God of Israel. Now therefore we may not touch them because I have sworn to them. My word, a believer's word, should be good. I, I read about a guy. Bought a piece of merchandise for himself. The merchandise, he gave him half, most of that he went on, he told me, he said, now, on so and so time, I'm gonna pay you. The guy that sold him the merchandise told him the merchandise was good. The merchandise wasn't any good. Mm. The average person would have told that fellow, you won't get another dime from me. You done deceived me by lying to me with this merchandise that wasn't any good. Why should I keep my word? I keep my word because of who I represent. And because I told you I'm going to pay you, you should pay the person. But they didn't do me right. They want God to see God. Yes. Yes. We want to go to all of God. Yes. In our life and in our world. So whatever the other person did, you don't have to give an account of it, but you will have to give an account of what you did. We need direction from God in everything we do. By keeping their word, they prove their loyalty to God. And all of us should prove our loyalty to God. And He is a God of truth. And if He is a God of truth, and He dwells inside of me, am I supposed to be a, a being of lies? Deceit? No, my worry should be my mom. This is why, as believers, we have to watch how we put our worry out there. Before you can put your word out, you need to properly seek the Lord because once it comes out of your mouth, it is a contract. Are y'all understanding me? That word becomes a contract. And this is why we should seek the Lord in everything that we do. They trick the people. They trick their ways into the family of God. Now, now, now y'all need to get here. You see, when we obey God, and we do what we're supposed to do, even though that trick us and deceive us, will end up being in the presence of God, should I say, because the scripture here, it says that they put them as slaves, and woodcutters, and water carriers, to what? The temple. The temple of God. In other words, I mean, get it. The Israelite God gave him the effort to take the Gileadites and put them in the presence of God. In the presence of God, they could not use the influence of other gods to mislead the children of Israel. Why? Because they were so much in the presence of God, they couldn't help but to ooze off them. How do I know that? When the children of Israel returned back out of bondage, we'll find out later. You'll find that the Gileadites was one that went back to help rebuild the temple. What do that mean? That means that they became saved. They became believers. 
in God. They tricked their way into the family of God. So what did that show up? All that work for the good of those that love the Lord. They were always to serve in the duties of the tabernacle. In verse 23, look what it says. It says, Now therefore, you are cursed, and none of you shall be free from being slaves, woodcutters, and water carriers for the house of God. Keep them near the presence of God. This is right. Bring your children into the presence of God. Bring your family into the presence of God. This is what we're not doing. And we say, well, they're going to be all right. No, they're not going to be all right. And none of us going to be all right without the presence of God. None of us. Don't let anybody fool you to think that you will be. When we get down to verse 27, it says that Joshua made them wood cup and water carry for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord in the place which he would choose even to this day in God's holy presence that eventually the Gideon night would become believer in the truth and living God and it worked out just like that. God take the bad and make it into good. God takes what happened to you and make it happen for you. We have to stop looking at what the problem is and look at how big our God is. If we didn't see God in the beginning, when we overtake it, we need to see God in the middle and we need to follow God to the end. Are we getting this? Why? Because He is the one that came down to make things right for us. He is the one that died in our place. He is the one that, that God raised up from the dead. He is the one that got up early that Sunday morning. He is the one that's going back to prepare a place for us. He is the one that's coming back to receive us unto himself. And he is the one that we are supposed to be going all in for to follow. We got to seek the Lord in all things. And there's not a person in here that have not been deceived. Even children get deceived. Because parents, if we tell our child we're going to do something and don't do it, we done deceived them. And while I've always been hard on my children to get me to say, okay, yeah, you can do that. No, you can't do it. It's hard to get it out because I know once it come out of there, it's a contract. And I can't go back on it. Why do I say it? Because of what I represent. If God is truth, then I have to be true. Why? Because He's inside me. And we should not make the Holy Spirit tell lies. Amen. Because that's exactly what we do. And it's stuck inside and we say, you know, you mind, don't do that. I got to keep myself out of trouble. I got to save myself. I heard a person say it all the day, say, it's all right to lie to save yourself. No, I'm not. Why, the Bible says the truth that's going to make you free. It's not the lie to make you free. I'm lying to save myself. No, you're lying to hang yourself. Because if you think you get by with it over here for a while, what about when payday comes and you close your eyes? Mm -hmm. That's not a good place to be. Mm -hmm. Oh, I want to see the morning fading.